Kings, they can easily bowl a 135. <laughs> because it was a bowling class in college, which also raised several questions. It's first things first today. Dak keeps throwing pick sixes. Does he need to be more boring to keep the other team from scoring? Meanwhile, another day, another non-guaranteed dollar. The latest on Lamar and his playoff availability, it's not good. And finally, in one hour, well, you're in luck. It's the most motivating segment in all of sports television. Alongside Nick Wright, I'm Kevin Wilde. Broussard, any surprises on the bud list? No, but I just have a lot of motivation to dish out. Oh, great. Good. I'm dishing out large, mo large pieces of inspiration, guys. So get like, ready. Like pizza? Like there's slices? Pieces, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> It would be good. I always thought it because we, we were playing around like we were pouring. Yeah, we were pouring more yeah, than we Cups, whatever. Cups. We got it on tap. Brady's future. <laughs> Monday night, Brady will be in Tampa Bay. After that, who knows? New report says that the GOAT going to Miami is, quote, definitely on the table. Wow. We know there was some interest last year. Does this make sense to you now, Nick? Absolutely. No. 100%. It, it, if you would, it made sense before the season. It did not make sense at the midway point of the season. And now it makes sense once again. It didn't make sense at the midway point of the season because it was like, well, they're just obviously going to stick with Tua. Even though guys such as myself still had some question marks about him, mm -hmm. he's so much younger and seemingly had so much more upside, and he's under contract. All of it. it's like, okay, Tua, Mike McDaniel might be coach of the year, and Tua is going to be their quarterback of the future. He's an MVP, right? But – it was a dark horse MVP. Was, you got, yeah, like, it's sure. no doubt. Tyree, more uh, than Tyree. And so, but now, if I were to, let's start here. Next year, who are you more confident will play all 17 games? Tom Brady at 46 years old mm, or Tua Tonga-Vailoa? I feel almost badly talking about that, but if you're all the right. Dolphins, you have to do that math there. Also, I still think Mike McDaniel is a super sh sharp coach, but they wanted Sean Payton before. And Brady wanted Sean Payton. And if you guys don't think it's on the board that if the Miami Dolphins get rolled this weekend and Stephen Ross, who tried to make this happen to the loss of a draft pick and other stuff this offseason, wouldn't consider calling wow. up Sean Payton and seeing if he and Tom Brady want to do what they tried to do a year ago, of course that's on the board. And Brady in this offense – with those weapons, with the added motivation, no bud list, you know, there yet, but of getting able, being able to do it in the AFC East against Bill Belichick, yeah. against the Patriots, yeah. for all, and not having to move that far, whatever his family situation is yeah. right now, they've worked out to where he can go from Florida to wherever, and still be in Florida, still be on the East Coast. For all those reasons, whether they keep Mike McDaniel or while they, whether they try to make it a package deal, I think one year of Tom Brady in Miami makes a lot of sense. It makes all the sense in the world. All right, and the one place I disagree with you, Nick, is on McDaniel. I'm sticking with Mike McDaniel. If they, they, what if Brady if they says get you got last, it? <sighs> what if Brady says it, it's both of us or neither of us? Ah, that that's tough. They're That's tough, but McDaniel is a good coach. I think he's shown that. I, I totally agree. Right? I and, totally and I agree. think he deserves to keep this job, but I do think they need to bring in Brady. And you said it to – and look, I don't cut Tua. No, of now, course not. Okay, I keep Tua, let him learn at the feet of the GOAT for a year, and, I mean, I don't think that matters in terms of concussions that you didn't play for a year. But, you know, hopefully he can get healthy, you know, sure. and come. If Brady's one year, it's a one-year yes. deal. You try to win the Super Bowl. And if whatever happens, if Brady leaves after one year, Tua's there ready to take the reins. You're right. He gets to you know, beat up Belichick twice a year. No, he won't. Uh, well, you don't like this. I, I, it leaves a sour taste in my mouth for me and for Tom Brady. First, I'll talk about Tom Brady. Okay. Stay out of the AFC East, just practically. The Jets are going to be sneaky good next yes. year. Woody Johnson says they're going to get somebody. Maybe they, let's Derek give them Carr. Derek Carr. Right. Yes. All of a sudden, Jets are sneaky good. We know Josh Allen is fantastic. They might get better after they go on a nice little playoff run. After they win the Super Bowl. Patriots, we're going to get a new uh, offensive coordinator. Just from a football standpoint, we're, AFC East is going to be Packed. Well, listen, I the, just true. not to interrupt, even we don't even have to argue about the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Even if the Patriots stink, 
the AFC East is still really tough. So I sure. agree with your general point. Yeah, and then emotionally, I think it's just a bad move. Why? I, it feels Brett Favre to the Vikings to me. Just it's and? not gonna. Uh, it's just not gonna. If be he a wins nice, a Super Bowl with Miami, you know, winning a Super Bowl with Miami, you're not gonna. They, be, you're they not were gonna a be very able, good team this th year. Right this year, Tom nine. Brady should look around and say, "Huh, I'm in the playoffs. I'm getting a lot of compliments. I'm also under 500. Maybe I should pick out a ni nice little weak division to go to." Don't stay away from Patrick Mahomes. That's stay your away best from argument. Josh because I, I look, I, I do think this is the other than San Francisco. If they struggle, you know, yes. if they somehow lose to Seattle or whatever, this is the best landing spot for him. But you're right, the division. So that that's a good. But point. here's where I disagree wholeheartedly about how much the division part should pl should play a part of it. Do we all agree that if Tom Brady this year, let's say they even beat the Cowboys, mm -hmm. and then they get rolled in round two? That for him this year will feel like a failure. Yes. Make it, under 500. No, of, of, course. of course. So my I'm point is he is only in the Super Bowl business. And if you're trying to win the Super Bowl, the math should not be where can I go to most easily win the division? Your math needs to be what team is good enough for me to have a chance to not just win a crummy division, but to win a Super Bowl, which is why, yes, of course, San Francisco would be the best option, but it does. I don't know. We'll see what they do in the playoffs, what Purdy does, all of that. But then the other options are of teams that need a quarterback and we think have a ton of talent are all in brutal divisions. The Jets would be an option. They're in the same division. The Dolphins, obviously, we've talked about. The Raiders, some people have speculated. That's a brutal division. No, you have away. Mahomes and Herbert. So with the idea of, oh, stay in the AFC South and go to Carolina, yeah, you can win that division. Why but not you just can't. stay with the Bucks? Because what? he was trying to leave the Bucks last year. They're well, not and, that good. And they're not that. I think okay, he needs to go to Well, then good. What? You should pick them to lose. Just oh. like I yeah. yeah, all right. Twisting we'll you guys see how up that there. one goes. Well, one team's scoring, one team's boring. I know that much. I turn our attention on the field. Dak Prescott. You know what? I like it now. I like really? it now. Yeah. I don't. It's right. I, I, I just gone through the exact same evolution of my feelings about you. Oh, yeah. In the beginning, like, what wow. is this even keep about? Showing, keep and now I love you. Yeah. And then it turns. Yeah, right. eventually. Uh, Dak keeps throwing the ball the wrong team. Jerry Jones rejects the idea. That Dak is turnover prone. Take a listen. It's in Dak's DNA not to turn the ball over. His famous story that I often repeat is that he said more often than not when his mother saw him in the kitchen, she'd say, remember, no turnovers. He understands turnover better than all of us put this together. Was that, a turn was that a turnover food joke? Yeah. Oh, okay, was. I didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, Dak's yeah. interception in his NFL career, Brew, used to be pretty good, not great this year. So, are you expecting a clean game from Dak in Tampa Bay Monday night? All right, first of all, let me address Jerry Jones. <laughs> oh, man. This is what I mean by foolishness. And I'm not even talking about the corny joke well, about being spokesy. in the kitchen. And yeah, he's that, I'm not even talking about that, though. It's in Dak's DNA not to turn the ball over? Really? Well, it used to be. Then why did he lead the league in interceptions despite missing five games? Needs a blood transfusion. All right, and, 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 and two of his years, he's had more than he's had double-figure interceptions. I, I get it. He hasn't been, you know, throwing the ball all over the yard. He used and, to, and this used to be his strength, bro. But hold on. This was the question. Turnovers. All right, that includes fumbles. Oh. Dak has led the league in fumbles oh. twice in his career. That's good. See, good I point. dig. I don't just go on the superficial <laughs> okay. level. I dig. And Jerry should know. He led the league in interceptions this year. <laughs> He's led the league in fumbles twice. I mean, come on. No, I don't expect him to play a clean game. He's thrown interceptions in his last seven games. And in four of those okay. games, Nick, yeah. He's thrown two Yeah, this is, listen, aside from the totally unnecessary drive-by on Wilds. Was it on me or you? I, I don't know. It couldn't have been on me. It wouldn't have made sense. It had to be about you. I don't know what you did. Aside from that, I agree with <laughs> He leads the league this year in lowest interception percentage. 1.1%. Yeah. So that is, it's for a guy who fumbles were his biggest issue, but Absolutely. picks were a part of it too. He hasn't been fumbling, and he really hasn't been throwing picks. I give him credit. But in the first matchup, they had no answer for Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson's kind of been under wraps the last couple of weeks after yeah. it looked like he might go for 2,000 yards. This game is <clears> going to be on turf, obviously. 
and it's going to be to me this is a a Vikings comfortable win comfortable. wow a comfortable win a no I, I'm comfortable. with Greg I definitely think the Giants have a chance to win this game like you said Jones threw for over 300 yards yeah, yeah. Only done like twice everybody throws and them they right. average like six sure. yards a game right that defense is horrible my what what I'm upset about is that I, I mistakenly told Wilds this. I let him know I was liking the Giants, yeah. and you're going to steal it as your upset alert. No one knows, but it's a good tease that, for that's, tomorrow. You, you did steal my it, graphic because I wanted my to upset show you my – uh, vi- no, no. And then gallivanted called, around in called, sunglasses. I didn't gallivant around. I stay seated. I stay <laughs> – In spirit, you were gallivanting. Here's everyone to face the Vikings since Thanksgiving. They allowed 380 to Mac Jones. Career high. Hello. You you want to change your take? That's like 700 yards to a real game. Peterman had 114. They're not good. 